Morning everybody, Silvalt here, back for a Transformers review. Going to be doing, obviously as per the title page, Animated Swindle. Now, um, Animated Swindle um, is only in about two episodes. Um, one where he first shows up, and then later on in the episode I believe it was called Decepticon Air. And, well, Swindle... Well, he'd sell his own mother if he thought he could make a quick profit from it. He'd sell his favourite kitten. You know, if he had, if his internal organs were viable on the black market, he'd probably get rid of the ones he had two of. Um, he is an out-and-out -out mercenary. Um, well, he's not even a mercenary. He's more of a smuggler. Um, he deals in weapons. Um, and he acts like a used car salesman. Like He, he acts like the stereotypical used car salesman. And when it comes to weaponry, he has no scruples. He would give a five-year-old child a nuclear warhead for fun. You know, he is completely unscrupulous. And, um... It was what makes him such a fun character. Um, now, S Swindle, of course, does bear the Decepticon logo. And by all intents and purposes, he is a Decepticon. But, you know... Is he really evil? I mean, if your definition of evil is, I want to take over the entire universe and conquer everything and grind them all behind my uber shiny heel, aka Megatron, is evil, then yes, Swindle is evil. Um, however, if your other definition of evil is, I'm going to sell what I want, how I want, for the price I want, and if it just so happens that it's going to kill a lot of people, oh well, not my fault, I didn't pull the trigger, is also evil, then yes, Swindle is evil. Um, but whether he's a Decepticon, no, because he's one of the he's one of the few Decepticons, for instance, that does not answer Megatron's call to arms um, to attack the rest of the Autobots. Rather, he'd rather just sit back and make as much money off the off it as as he can. Um, similar to Lockdown, you know, and that's how that's how Swindle first pops into the series. He's made a deal with Lockdown and found out to get to Earth. Um, and he's found out the situation that's happening on Earth with the other Autobots and the Decepticons and that on 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 that planet. And so he comes to Earth, where he where he meets up with the Society of Ultimate Villainy, which is the cringiest series thing going because it has the an amalgamation of the human villains of Transformers Animated, which thankfully season three didn't have one of. Um, or did it have Headmaster? I can't remember. There wasn't a lot of them. You know, the the the, the Archer dude and slow mo and that Powerpuff riding a My Little Pony unicorn. Um, they weren't in it. Thankfully, because I hated them. And basically, they steal the components that he needs whilst he communicates from them uh, using a radio that he's given them. What they don't realise, of course, is that the radio is in their SUV. Their SUV is Swindle. Um, the deal, as of course with Swindle, does go a little bit sour when he um, he asks Slow Mo to give uh, her her all spark charge timepiece. Which is what allows it to slow us down time. Um, slow mo naturally refuses. Swindle goes, <laughs> "You're saying no? That's not a good idea." Um, and then the uh, the the ultimate society, the society of ultimate villainy, team up with the Autobots, stop Swindle. Swindle ends up paralysed and being towed away. Um, being towed away. Uh, by the police, who promise that they're going to sell his insides to a. Um, at a police auction. Uh, oh, and, you know, that's probably a reference to the G1 episode, Bot, um, when the Combaticon swindle in what is quite possibly one of the worst episodes of Transformers ever, um, sells the, the destroyed, ridiculously easily parts of Bruticus to El Presidente. But there we go. So, yes, um, and that's it. After that, Swindle... Swindle's not there anymore. And, um... And he's subsequently captured by Sentinel Prime. When Sentinel Prime was going around, I'm so great and wonderful, look at me! Attitude, when in actual fact Lockdown was doing the work and Sentinel was getting all the credit. And, um, so it wasn't really hard to capture Swindle as soon as he's in stasis lock. Um... Swindle then starts providing once he gets once he wakes up on the ship uh, back to Cybertron. I think it's back to Cybertron anyway, um, and starts providing people with weapons, um, including giving Ramjet and well the, the Starscream clone that looks like Ramjet and I think it's a Starscream clone that looks like 
Sunstorm. Um, and he gives them the head, so the, the the white one gets a very cone head style, and the orange one gets um, uh, a very more G1 with the grill sides, if I recall correctly. Apparently, so that it's easier to tell them apart. What are you, Swindle? Colorblind? You know, one's white, one's orange. It's not hard. You know, these aren't Hasbro repaints. Well, actually, yes, they are. But there we go. Um, and he gives them all their weapons back, which of course Sentinel Prime has captured to show Optimus and to prove to Optimus that um, he has, of course, captured these Decepticons. Um, the plan's going very, very well until Optimus Prime makes an, an, an extremely grotesque appearance by doing it. It's practically an alien scene, you know. Prime just like because Swindle has a a warp generator in his chest, it's how he stores everything, uh, it's, you know, it's very similar to something like a bag of holding um, so bag of holding is a D&D &D reference, it's, it's basically an item that allows you to put you know, stupid long things, Mary Poppins carpet bag, there we go, yes yeah, Swindle has Mary Poppins carpet bag in his chest um, and Prime in a very gross act scene, you know, first out comes the arm and the arms up here, while Swindle's just standing there going um, the arm comes... Well, not a surprise, really. The arm comes out, and then the rest of Prime comes out, and it's like, that's gross! All that's missing is birthing fluid! It's foul! Um, at the same time, quite humorous, because then I've got a, quite a sick sense of humour. But there we go. Um, Swindle, at this... Uh, Swindle, during the rest of this episode, decides that he's not going to do a lot of fighting. I mean, he's a little bit of a runt. He really is a bit of a runt. So he's not much cop in a fight, despite having... HUGE ARM CANNON OF DOOM! Um, he's not an awful lot of, um, he's not much by way of fighting. But, um, so he promptly just makes his getaway and steals what he can on the way out. And that's the end of Swindle. We don't see him again. He does make an appearance in the IDW comics for Animated, but I haven't actually read them at this moment in time, so... I won't go into them just yet. Um, namely because I'm still fixated on getting the rest of the G1 comics. And the IDW and the Dreamwave stuff. But there we go. Hopefully you'll also be able to get them. Okay, now on to the toy. Now, the first thing I want to draw your attention to is that, of course, he is... Um, well, he's an American-style SUV Jeep thing. Very similar to his uh, G1 counterpart, of course. Um, apart from the fact his G1 counterpart's open-topped. But there we go. And uh, I just want to see... This is something I noticed at work. I don't think it's supposed to be deliberate, but I clicked it at work yesterday. Because I bought these in Tesco. Because Tesco are currently, of course, uh, getting rid of a lot of the animated stuff. Because um, they're making way for the movie line. So I was able to actually get um, uh, this for a fiver, along with animated blur. So it was like, awesome. Gotta buy that. So um, does this remind you of anything? Does this look familiar at all? Maybe this will help. Yes! Mask! It just... For the life of me, I can't remember the actual name of Matt Tracker's car, but it, 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 it's just the way the wings folded up, and it's like, holy hell, I wonder if that's deliberate. Can't be, surely. But then you never know, it might well be. Uh, but yes, um, nice vehicle mode, I have to admit, despite the fact I've still got him in mask mode. <laughs> Uh, I do like the vehicle mode. Okay, on to the robot mode. Um, I have to admit, I did have to refer to the instructions for this one a little bit. Not as much as I have to refer to them with Blur, though. Blur was like... Uh, 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 what? Anyway. Um, but now, you just pull the legs down, because I've already pushed the wheels in. Snap them out of place. Flip that bit down, and then you did, I'll just get your finger and push the head up. So it goes in like that. Um, now the arms fold, just literally just unfold just snap out of place and then the the grill parts just fold over again for the hands I didn't just fall it off, I didn't just pull it off so okay, this actually this was actually this actually got pulled off yesterday by this, one of the girls at work. But we won't go there, will we, Tina?
and then you just push the stomach part in. Fold these two little bits up here to give him shoulder cannons. And animated swindle is done. Can't really see that very well actually. Okay. Um, has much more of a devastator colour scheme to him than uh, the G1 swindle. And oh, sorry, and his arm cannon goes in like that. Oh, that's one thing I want to show you because I really like this bit. Um, I think this has been the mo this is this is the most impressive piece of spring-loaded missile technology I've ever had. So you get your missile bit. You get your missile. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. See where the purple bit is just there. Push the missile in, and it goes. Yeah, orange. I'm easily amused. But I think that's I think that's great. And then when you fire the missile, it goes purple again. I think that's really clever. Um, but then, I, as I said, I am very easily amused. Now then, um, the robot mode itself. Now, I have two main gripes with this. One, the head. Now, the head is show accurate. However, it just looks... Weird, though. Incidentally, he is the only Decepticon slash smuggling slash mercenary slash trader slash whatever thief um, to not have red eyes. Um, all the others red eyes. Swindle, in do in obviously direction to his G1 counterpart, has um, purple eyes. Um, Swindle in the G1 is probably has got some of the most direct references to his G1 counterpart in his head's very similar um, he's got an arm cannon that's very similar and he's basically a sneaky little thief like the original Swindle um, the other thing I don't like about it is the hands I, I, I don't like these grasping paw things I don't like the shape of them at all um and the other, and the, the main thing that I think is really dumb is this, the Gatling gun in his stomach. There's just something about that that there's just something about the little Gatling gun in his stomach that just doesn't sit right with me. I just think it looks a little strange. Um, so I will admit that you know I do like the toy, but it's I've got more gripes with it than say Uber Coolness. Um, I do like him. Um, he's a bit stocky, but then Swindle is supposed to be stocky. And the head shape doesn't sit right with me, and as I said, the hands don't sit right with me. For an animated toy, he's all right. Um, as I've said before, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the animated toys don't impress me. I don't dislike them, but they don't impress me that much. Um, and Swindle's one of them. You know, I like him, but it's like a case of okay. <laughs> uh, but uh, as I said, the main thing I don't like is I can live with the head, but the main thing I don't like is the hands. The way they're in that clawish thing that don't quite make sense to put together, um, but that's just me. That's just me. There's just something about the hands I just don't like. Um, has an awful lot of purple on him, you know, and a lot of that translucent purple. You hold him up to a light source, you know. It's 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 through his hands, it's through his legs, his face. Well, obviously his face, his arm sockets. Um, no, he's, and his chest plate, of course. Though that reason he isn't. Um, That really doesn't really make you can't really shine a light for that. It's not translucent. That's the word I was looking for. Okay, but yes, I picked him up in Tesco for a fiver because Tesco are currently, of course, you know, getting rid of all the animated stuff so they can put the new movie stuff out. Of which I've had a look at several of the toys and thought, um, don't like them. Except for Voyager Prime, I might invest in Voyager Prime. I don't mind that one. Okay, that's animated swindle done. I'm going to well, I'm going to go get breakfast actually. Um, I'm going to make this and upload it, and um, well, that's it for me for today. Um, next week, um, I'm pretty sure most of you will have guessed what's coming, but there won't be a video next Thursday um, because next Friday in the UK is June the 19th, and in the UK that means that Transformers: Revenge of the Fallen is released. Ha <laughs> ha! <laughs> we got it for the Americans. Ha 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 ha! And we won't mention the Japanese got it before us. Um, but yes, uh, so next uh, next Friday it will be me, I will be going to see Revenge of the Fallen, um, 
I think it'll be coming as well. So, but that'll be fun. So the next review will be on the Range of the Fallen movie. So until then, this is Silverbolt with Swindle signing out, saying au revoir, adios, a bit